In previous tutorials, we discussed how to write multi-threaded applications in WX widgets. We explained what threads are, why they are important in the context of UI programming, what the dangers are, and how to use them correctly. To demonstrate that, we use the C++ standard libraries implementation of threads, available since C++ 11. WX widgets offers its own implementation of threads, WX thread and WX thread helper. These classes use the same underlying operation system libraries as C++ standard threads, but the usage is different. I find standard threads much more convenient, but understanding the WX threads might be helpful if you need to use an older compiler or maintain code that references WX threads. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use WX widgets thread classes. We will explore the differences between them and the standard threads, discuss some problems the WX threads present, and show how to make implementing WX threads much easier by using the WX thread helper class. So, if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to like and subscribe, and let's begin. We start with a simple program that implements a slow sorting algorithm for a large array and visualizes the process on a two-dimensional grid, where the color of each square represents the value in the collection. The sorting is performed on a background thread, visualizations are done on the main thread, and the array is protected by a mutex to avoid race conditions. We also handle the onClose event and split the closing process into two parts to ensure the background process finishes gracefully before the main window is destroyed. See my standard thread and data sharing videos for a full tutorial on how to build this from scratch. The current implementation uses the touch threads. That's also the default for the WX thread. Later, we will change it to joinable threads, but for now we stick with the default. If you want to know more about the differences between these two types, I recommend you watch my standard threads video. Let's change our application to use WX threads instead of C++ threads. We cannot simply instantiate a WX thread. We need to subclass it and override at least the entry method. Let's start by simply allowing the client class the main frame in our case, to supply a callback to be run in the background. That's the easiest way to avoid passing data between the thread and the client classes. In the implementation file, we call the provided function in the entry method, which will be executed on the background thread. In the main file, we include the correct header ensure our main class derives from the callback class and implement the do background work method by simply calling the sorting function. Also, the code responsible for launching the thread needs to be modified to use the correct class and handle possible errors. After adding the CPP file to CMake lists, we run the project and see that everything works correctly. The WX thread interface requires us to check the return value of the test destroy method when running our background task. This is needed for the WX thread delete method to work. This method allows the user to terminate the thread gracefully, but it only works if the thread subclass allows such a graceful exit by correctly using the test destroy call. We add this call inside the outer loop of our background task. If the user requests the thread to exit, we send out a UI update event, break out of the loop and return from the method. Additionally, if there is a pending request to quit the application, we do so in the UI callback. In onClose, we add a call to delete to signal that we want the thread to exit. This will make the test destroy return true and our thread will begin the exit procedure described before. Since we also set the quit requested to true, the thread will call destroy on the main frame in its UI callback. This looks like an innocent change, but it isn't. As always with multi-threading, we must be cautious and analyze how changes in the code affect the flow of our program and the interaction between the threads. The touch WX threads delete themselves when they finish the work, that is when they exit from the entry method. This means that after the thread finishes its work, 
let's say after completing the entire uh, sorting task, the memory pointed to by the background thread variable is released, and we end up with an invalid pointer. This shouldn't be a problem in our program, as we never read that pointer, we only allocate it when the user clicks the start button, and then we forget about it, except for the onclose call to delete. This call happens only if our processing flag is true. We reset this flag in the UI callback after the thread finishes, so we shouldn't be concerned that the background thread member points to the released memory. After the thread ends its work and frees its memory, we set the processing flag to false. And since the only case where we read that memory happens if the processing flag is true, we should be safe, right? Well, if the user is lucky, they can click close somewhere near this point before the background thread executes the call after line. At this point, the processing flag is still true and the onclose method enters the first if block. Remember, the background thread works in parallel, so while the onclose enters the if block, the thread may schedule the call after, then return from its method and delete itself, just like the touch threads do when they finish work. If that happens, the onclose will try to use the already freed background thread pointer and cause a crash. The problem is that we rely on the processing flag to decide if we want to touch the background processing pointer. We assume the thread is working as long as the processing flag is true, but that is not always the case. The processing flag is true for longer than the thread's lifetime, because it stays on during the whole process, from the button click until the final UI update when we show the result message on the status bar. The thread might be deleted just before the final UI update, and that's our problem. You may think of resetting the processing flag in the thread itself before it finishes the entry method, not in the UI callback. But consider that we use that flag in the on button click to check whether we allow the user to start sorting. If we reset the flag too early, we may end up in a situation where the user clicks the button after the thread exits and resets the processing flag, but before the final update happens. We will set the status bar text to a phrase that suggests we've just started sorting and then the UI update from the finished sorting process will arrive, changing our status text back to the final message, leaving the UI in an inconsistent state. So the processing flag logic is correct, we just shouldn't rely on it to decide whether the background thread pointer is safe to use, because these two are separate concerns. To fix this, we will make sure the background thread pointer is reset to null when the thread is released, and we will check if that's the case in the onclose method. Since we will be resetting the pointer in the background thread and checking it in the main thread, onclose is handled on the main thread, we will need some kind of protection for our pointer variable. Regarding data protection, let's make a small change before implementing that logic. The most common structure for data protection in WX widgets is a critical section. It works just like a mutex. We can lock it, unlock it, and use a helper locker object which locks it in the constructor and unlocks it when it's destroyed. When one thread enters a critical section, the other has to wait for it to exit before it's allowed to enter. The change from mutex to a critical section is straightforward and we implement it everywhere we used to use a mutex. Now back to resetting the background thread pointer. We want to do this in the thread destructor, but sorting thread class does not know about any pointers that point to its instances. So we add an abstract method to our callback class and execute it in a destructor. The myframe class will have a chance to reset the pointer there. First, we need to ensure that the pointer is null initialized, so we add the braces. As I said before, we need to protect this variable from race conditions, so we add another critical section specifically for that pointer. In the destructor callback, we lock the critical section and reset the pointer. Now we can safely use it in the onclose method. If the pointer is not null, that means the thread is running, and we can safely call delete. Alright, let's move on. Our goal is to move all the logic related to the sorting task to the sorting thread class, 
leaving the MyFrame to do UI updates. To continue decoupling the logging from the UI, we will introduce thread events. At this point, we use call after to do UI updates in the background thread. We will change this to thread events. Both approaches are correct, the thread events are just a little more explicit, and you may come across them when working on existing code that uses WX widgets multi threading. We add declaration and definition macros for our events and proceed with implementing the event callbacks, remembering to bind the callbacks to actual events. The first UI update in the background task method may as well happen in the button click handler, so we move it there. Then we progress to implement the update and completion events. The update event will receive a number from 0 to 1, indicating the sorting progress, and will update the UI accordingly. The completion method will set the status text to the past string and handle the quit requested flag. Because of this, we will be able to use the same completion event both in the test destroy check and at the end of the thread task. We send the events in the background task. We declare the event object, set the correct payload and push it to the event loop. We do the same for the completion events as described before. We are now ready to move the sorting code to the sorting thread class. For this to work, we need the thread class to access the data to be sorted, along with its protective critical section object and the event handler. We add these as private member variables and set them in the constructor. We won't need the background work callback, so we remove it and replace that call with the contents of the background task method from my frame, making sure we use the correct handler and return null as required by the method signature. The my frame class needs a bit of cleaning and an update of the sorting thread constructor call where we pass the variables required to perform the sorting operation. That's it for the detached wx thread. All the sorting code is in our sorting class, with a good separation of concerns between MyFrame and sorting thread. We run the code and see that it works correctly. WX widgets also supports joinable threads. These threads do not destroy themselves after completion, and we must call wait on the thread object when their work is done. Let's see how to change our program to use joinable threads. First, we pass the correct parameter for the parent class constructor, indicating we want a joinable thread. Next, in the thread completion callback, we must call wait on the thread object to ensure it exits gracefully, then manually delete it. Calling delete on the joinable thread, just like we do in onClose, also makes the calling thread wait for the background thread to finish. Because of that, we are blocked in onClose anyway, for a short period, and we can simplify the closing process. We remove the whole quit requested mechanics that split the quitting process in two. We call delete on the thread, which makes test destroy return true and waits for the thread to finish. After the thread is completed, we continue the destruction of the main frame. This works well on Mac and Linux, but we have a problem on Windows. After we start the background task and interrupt it by closing the window, we get an error stating that the handle of the thread is invalid. Let's take a closer look. 
We call delete in onClose, which also waits for the thread to finish, and then in the thread completion callback, we wait for the thread again. This callback is executed when test destroy is true, so we wait for the thread twice. The call to delete waits for the thread completion and frees its resources, invalidating the internal thread handle. This is expected, but the problem is that when we call wait, the wxthread implementation does not check the internal handle. It blindly calls the Windows API, which results in an error, because the handle is no longer valid. To me, this looks like a bug in WX widgets, or at least an inconsistency, because neither Linux nor Mac implementations exhibit this problem. In any case, we need to apply a workaround. We add the cancel event to be fired when test destroy is true. In the callback, we update the status and reset the processing flag but we don't call wait on the thread in order to avoid waiting on an invalid handle. We only reset the pointer in onClose after the delete call. Now everything works well and we don't get any errors. We can simplify our program even more by using wxthreadhelper. This mixing class allows us to implement the threads entry method right in the class that uses threads. We won't use the sorting thread files anymore, so we copy the thread events declarations to the main file. The myframe class needs to derive from wxthreadhelper to access all the thread-related facilities. The all thread objects and callbacks are not needed anymore, we only need the entry method. The mechanics of wxthreadhelper will handle the management of the hidden thread object. What we need to do is to call the thread creation method and implement the background task code. In the button click handler, we create and run our thread using methods supplied by the wxthreadhelper mixin. Again, we remove any references to the old background thread object. The onClose can also be simplified. We get rid of the thread's critical section and leave only the call to delete. This call waits for the thread destruction, so after that we can destroy our main window. We then move the actual task code back to my frame, making sure we queue the events to the correct handler. Lastly, we get rid of the thread pointer in the thread completion event and instead get the thread from the mixin. We wait for it, leaving the delete mechanics to be handled by wxthreadhelper. We get rid of the sorting thread class and there we have it, the most straightforward working implementation of wxthreads using wxthreadhelper mixin. Let me know in the comments what you think of wxthreads. Do you prefer them over the standard C++ threads or not, and why? For now that's it for this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.